Hi Stampers, Rose Grunewald here coming at you from my stamping studio in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And today I'm going to show you how I made these gorgeous cards that I prepared for the One Stamp at a Time blog hop with our theme Pocket Full of Posies. Let's get started right away. The first project we're going to make is the card. And I've got some of the layers already cut for you. I'm using the Berry Burst card base, and my card base is cut five and a half by eight and a half, and then I fold it here so that our card front is four and a quarter by five and a half. For the inside of our card, I've got a layer of Daffodil Delight and a layer of Whisper White. And I like to do this so that we have a nice crisp white sheet to write our message on. Our layer of Daffodil Delight is four and a, uh, sorry, four inches by five and a quarter. And our Whisper White is just one eighth of an inch smaller than that. So the first thing I wanna do I like to stamp my greeting first when I do the inside of a card so I can layer the other images around that. So I'm using the Colorful Season stamp set and the sentiment I'm using for the inside is may all your tomorrows be as happy as today. And I'm going to line this up. Stamp it in the center here. I'm stamping that in Berry Burst. And I want that to tie in with my Daffodil Delight layer. So I'm going to use these little tiny flowers right here from the stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp those along the bottom of our saying here. Across the card. There we go. And we're gonna use those flowers again. So I'm just cleaning them off on my stamp and scrub. I'm going to layer this, let's see, with my snail adhesive. When I do layers where we're just peeking a little bit out, I just like to line up the sides with the edge and make sure that the width is the same around and that gets it nice and centered really pretty huh and then we'll mount that on the inside there we go and our inside of our card is finished so next I want to work on the card front and the first thing I want to do is we're going to do a lot of layering on this card. I want my base to have some dimension to it. So I'm going to come in here with my Berry Burst. And I'm just going to stamp these little flowers around the edges of my... Card base. Let's see, how do I want to do this? There we go. And I'm going to do the same in the bottom corner over here. I hear my dog scratching in the background there. All right. The next thing I'm going to stamp is our card 
front layer. And we're going to be using some two-step stamps. So first I'm going to do the silhouette or the frame of my chair. And I stamped that in early espresso. I give that some time to dry. Doesn't take long with this ink. Okay, and then I want the chair, the cloth of the chair, to be done in Daffodil Delight. I think these bright colors look really great together. And I'm, hopefully my head isn't in the way of your shot. I'm just going to line this right up. And stamp. It's pretty easy. Now, I, my theme was pocket full of posies, and immediately I thought of just flowers kind of everywhere. So I want this chair to be sitting in a bed of flowers. Got a little ink on the corner of my uh, block there. So in Berry Burst... I'm going to come in and stamp these flowers along the ground, almost like they are blowing in the breeze on a nice warm spring day. And I will come in with my sentiment next. I'm using the You Make Me Smile sentiment. And I'm going to stamp that in early espresso. Okay, so now that we've got our card front layer stamped, we're ready to get putting our card together. So we've got our base and now using my layering I think it's called layered leaves embossing folder I embossed a piece of daffodil delight it's a half inch smaller than the card base so it's five inches by three and three quarters I'm also going to step up these layers a bit by sliding a doily underneath this Daffodil Delight layer. So I'm just going to glue that down right away. And it's okay with me if that doily is just a bit off the edge over the top. I, I like it to look not so perfectly planned. And next let's glue down our embossed layer. I just love these bright cards. I'm so ready for spring. And that's the feel that I wanted to get with this pocket full of posies card. Okay, next I'm gonna come in with my linen thread. nice long piece here. We'll wrap this around our card base a few times and then tie it in a bow. Okay and then we're just going to tie this just like you would tie your shoes. I like to tie it in a knot first so that it's a little bit easier for my bow to stay put when I tie that. All right. 
And then you just tug on the ends till you get the bow the size that you want it. You can hear my dogs outside. I'm going to close my window here. There we go. And then a little tip for you. You can curl the ends of your linen thread by using your bone folder. So just like you would curl ribbon, I come in here and kind of make it real taut against the bone folder, slide it through, and it curls the ends of that a little bit. Looks pretty cool. Okay, next I die cut, I think you would call this like a stem and, and leaves from our Petals and more thin lit dies. So I used this die here and I cut that piece out in pear pizzazz because being a bright springy card, I needed just a pop of green in there. And what I'm going to do is just slide that. It's gonna go under our layer and I'm just gonna tape it down no one's going to see that tape because we're going to have a layer on top of that. So now I'll come in with my dimensionals here. secure there we go so our card is finished and we've got the inside done now I'm gonna show you how I made the box to go with the card these coordinate really well together okay so let me grab my layers we're just using um, two separate colors for our box. I've got a piece of Whisper White Thick that I chose for the base of the box. And I chose Thick so it's a bit sturdier. And then we're using Berry Burst for the top. So the base is seven inches by four and a half. And we're gonna score that at one and a half inches all the way around the outside. So let me just grab my trimmer here and we're going to go, like I said, one and a half and turn another one and a half and we're just going to score all the way around each side of the cardstock here. Okay, next I'm going to fold on all the score lines. And I'm going to come in here. Let's see. Yep, this will be the right way. And I'm just going to snip up the score line. And to make it easier to fold this box together, I'm going to cut a notch out here where our seams are gonna to come together. I'm also gonna cut a slight notch on the edge from here to the fold line 
because this is going to go on the inside of our box and I don't want that layer peeking up above the crisp edge. So these outer tabs that I'm cutting right now are going to be folded on the inside of the card, sorry, our box, and adhered to put it together. Get my liquid glue. We'll adhere this, and when I go to adhere it, I'm lining up the score line with the edge of this flap. And I'm going to turn around and do the same on the other side. Again, line up the score line with the edge of that flap and secure. And now we're going to come in on the other side and do the same thing. And one final side here. Again, lining up the edge of the flap with the score line so it's nice and straight. Now the liquid glue is really forgiving, so it's going to slide around a bit. That's why I'm making sure it's good and secure. And the bottom of our box is complete. We've got nice sturdy corners with those layers <clears throat> that we folded over. Okay, now we are on to our Berry Burst box top. And this is cut at eight and an eighth by five and five eighths. And we're gonna come in and score at one inch all the way around and then at two inches all the way around. So first I'm going to do one inch. I love the stamp and trimmer because you get a cutting blade and a scoring blade. So scoring for these 3D projects is really simple. And again, I am now scoring at two inches all around. We already scored at one and now we're coming in at two. Okay, so I'm going to fold on all the score lines and burnish those edges so we get a nice crisp fold. Now, we need to get some of this bulk out of here because we're going to be folding some of these layers over. So I'm cutting out the big rectangles, the two total inches on the far outside edge. I'm just cutting up along the score and fold lines that we created. Okay. 
So we're just left with this tab. Now I need to cut out just the one inch square around the next layer outer edge. And just like we did before, we're going to cut up at the seams so we can fold this box. And then around all the outside edges that are free and to be folded, we're gonna take away some of this paper bulk and just cut at a slight angle. to make it easier to line up our crisp edges with our crisp folds without the bulk of the paper. And I'm even doing it on these, you'll notice these far outside tabs. Okay, now we're ready to assemble the box top. And we're going to do it quite a bit like the bottom, only because this is the top, I want to have a little sturdier edges. So we're gonna put glue on our tab and adhere that. And then we'll do the same thing here. Liquid glue is perfect for putting these boxes together. I love how forgiving it is. Again, we're lining up our crisp edge with the creased edge. Okay, and then so that this is nice and kind of hiding our extra layers we're going to glue the flaps and fold them in so that's why we notched out the edge of those outside flaps and I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of get into this tight space here this in. I love my bone folder. And that final piece. The lid to our box is done. We just slide it on the bottom. We've got that white poking out a little bit below the top. And then you can decorate the top how you'd like. So I just took a layer of some DSP here, used our daisy punch, a strip of white paper, a little doily behind, and I'm going to put some 
uh, truffles, I think some of those lint chocolate truffles in mine. I think this will be just the right size for two of those truffles. And then I tied the linen thread around it. And there you have it. So we've got our gorgeous card with our matching box. And they go together so well and they'll be the perfect gift for somebody special. Hey, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Make sure that you are checking out my blog, countrycardsbyrose.com, for more inspiration. Also, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Up in the corner here, you see a picture of my face. If you click that, you can just subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love to keep you creatively thinking and hope to continue inspiring you with more videos. Also check out my Facebook page, Country Cards by Rose. I have a lot of ideas and, and kind of fun posts there going on too. So thanks so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day.